Hi there. Hello. Welcome. Oh, whoa. How are you doing? <laughs> Hi. I can't believe this is happening. Hi. Today we have Wally Jason Spice. And yes, we have Wally and Artemis right there. Okay. <laughs> crazy, right? There's a couple other characters. We've got stuffed animals in the background. You can kind of see over there, right? Right. Oh, There's a monkey. I mean, we have Shy. pulled out all the stops for this interview. Yeah. <laughs> This is a very high budget production, very professional. I'm not filming this in some random hotel room right now. Not at all. It is. And but, I'm in some random house I found and told her to show up. Yeah. It's it's incredible. When the, they get home though, we have to stop the interview. Whoever owns this place, we're gonna have to leave in a hurry. It's one of those we're films though. <laughs> so I'm glad to have you guys on board. Thank you so much for taking the time to actually, you know, come together. Help me grab this interview real quick. Um, oh, wow. Pulling out all the stops today. <laughs> yeah. Getting in character. That's great, though. <laughs> Hold on. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get your bow and arrow. Right. <laughs> your quiver on the back. Believe it or not, he just ran three miles before he came and did this interview, right? I am so hungry. I'm famished. <laughs> Bridge at this house. No yeah. problem. Yeah. My stores are a little low. I had a little snacks on my wrist. They should make that. I think that's what everyone needs, just a little wrist thing for your, all your snackies to go into. That is it. The wrist snack keeper is your new patent invention. Those are some really small snacks. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, we had huge wrists, man. That's true. Huge. <laughs> So today we're here to go into a little bit about how we can actually uh, bring our justice back and everything. Sorry, the lag is like gigantic, but it's all right. Um, so I want to actually just start out and say that, you know, this entire interview right here will be spoilers. So if you haven't already, go ahead, go to Netflix, check out Young Justice, you know, two seasons, you can get it done in a day probably, maybe multiple times, you know, before you come back and check out this interview. Yeah. Please binge as frequently as possible. Please do. The more you binge, the more chance we have that people will see how popular it is and want to do something about it. Yeah. And it won't be torturous because it's an awesome show. It's awesome. Sweet. It's a great background just like on your TV at all times, I think. Yeah. It likes a, like a wallpaper for your house. Totally. Just and leave moving it art. Up, like leave it up on the wall. Yeah. Project Young Justice on the wall. I bet they even have it at this house. We'll go check it out after. <laughs> Install it on all their devices before they get back quick. So, can you tell okay. me a little bit uh, just about how your initial audition process worked? Greg told me a little bit about how um, he basically auditioned for the main leads. So, if you can tell us a little bit, go way back to the very beginning of Young Justice. Can you tell us a little bit about how you guys actually started? Yeah, well... Um I got sides for it just like always. Uh, they didn't say it was for Kid Flash. They said it was for something else. I can't remember. I think they had like an underground title for it when I first auditioned. But when I got to the callback, they did have the artwork there and they did have the character name there. Um, and I was like, that is the coolest artwork ever, Kid Flash. I mean, he was amazing. Uh, the yellow suit and the, the red lightning bolt and the hair and instantly I felt like, okay, I think I got this. I got this this vibe. And then you just do the best you can. And I went completely nuts in the booth for Jamie uh, Thompson, who was the uh, you know, casting director, vocal director, and uh, Brandon and Greg. And I guess they liked what I did. So that's all you can hope for. And the rest is history. <laughs> My turn. So I... Um God, this was a while back. I barely it's remember. It's been a minute. Um, I will always remember it, however, because it was the first big series I ever got. And I'd been doing on-camera acting for a long time prior, and I just kind of started getting into voiceovers, and I'd done some movies, but not any work on a series yet. And I'd gotten called back so many times, but I hadn't actually booked my own show. And typically... <laughs> um, it's even gotten more so now. Things are so under wraps. Like, you don't know what you're auditioning for. It's a fake name, fake characters. I just thought it was a pilot. I didn't even know it was already a series. Um, and I, at my callback, I had, actually, I read for Miss Martian and Arrowhead. Um, Arrowhead. Remember? Yes. And I'm, you know, infamous for 
also not realizing I wasn't allowed to talk about it. I mean, I was fresh off, <laughs> fresh on the scene. Um, so I, I, I broke a lot of rules. Yeah, <laughs> I, I had no idea. I think when I found out I booked it, I was just so excited. Oh my God, I'm air wet! And I couldn't believe that it was an actual Check it out, everybody. It wasn't just a pilot. And then I almost lost my job. Like, and the they had I to got talk. It. I yeah, and then talk. everybody on the show got in trouble, but it was really like about me. Um, <laughs> but we all bonded right away over that one. I, I, took one I remember team. that. They're yeah. like, we had somebody. Uh, and then everyone knew. Talk about this online. <laughs> and you know the rules. And everybody was like. I really, I set the tone for all actors from that day forward in this industry. It was wonderful. And now everyone gets an NDA with audition, let yeah. alone. Thanks and NDA is a non-disclosure agreement. Thanks to Stephanie Lemlin. Every actor yeah. has to sign one. So, uh, <laughs> so really it was helpful. When I did. <laughs> it was. <laughs> it's true. I literally oh signed God. not a single you one. Have, no, you, like, you have to sign NDAs now before you can get your side to audition for a mm. show. Um, which is still secret. But back then, that? yeah. Okay. I was part of the first wave anyway. Yes. Since then, luckily enough, I've learned my lesson and I have worked much more. But... So I'll never forget that experience. And also, I don't know if when they interviewed you interviewed um, Greg, but did you interview him yes. too? Um, I, I actually have not interviewed any other uh, voice actors at the moment. So yeah, but I mean, it speaks monuments that you guys are the first people to pioneer NDAs thanks to Young Justice because you guys were just so excited about <laughs> the material you guys were working with. Uh, yeah, and I was really naive back then. Um, <laughs> now I'm old and jaded. Yeah, uh, super schooled and <laughs> yeah. Got three kids, she knows um, <laughs> but the truth is, this show obviously will always be extremely close to my heart, just because it was the beginning of you know this part of my career, which is one of the best jobs in the world, I have to say. Voiceover, right? Oh my like God. You, you, going back to on camera after doing voiceover is like going back to shoveling snow after you. It depends it. who you are and what you like. I, uh, you know, just I found something that I love so much, um, and I'm so grateful that my first experience was on a show like this. I mean, Young Justice had some of the best characters of all time, great mm -hmm. writers. And the actors that would come in every week would awesome. blow you away. It I mean, was the like, guest stars were just from television, from film, crazy. And I was this Nubian, and I came in and I just got like so by osmosis. I feel like I grew so much just being around all of these people, and it was incredible. It was kind of funny, also, Artemis was kind of a outsider in the beginning like figuring herself out mm. so it mirrored my journey in some ways um because i came in with a lot of attitude in that spot <laughs> yes <laughs> and yes. it served me well she brought it um, and everybody everyone's in a while was like, really yeah that's, oh, okay. that's congrats. but you know um i've matured since then <laughs> we wouldn't <laughs> change it that being said Wait. could you um that being said could you um uh, tell us a little bit about how uh, a typical recording day went for you guys. You know, you guys would come in impassioned about the characters after reading the new scripts and everything. Well, they would give us the script a day or two beforehand, so we'd get a chance to read it over. Uh, you show up, and usually in the room, there's anywhere from three to nine people. Uh, you know, they had a lot of people in the sessions early on on Young Justice. I mean, we had lots right, of folks. Right, we And... But you would go through a bit of the script at a time, just a piece of the script at a time, and do the scenes in real time with all the rest of the actors all at once, feeding off each other and everything. And then they would break it up into chunks and let you take pieces again if you didn't give them what they wanted, which was fairly frequently for me. Uh, <laughs> having to please those guys is, is a creative treat because they have something in their mind, and Jamie would always try and get you to do it one way, and then be like, is that it? Is that what you guys want? That that? No, how about something else? And then he'd come back and have you do it again. Uh, you always felt like you were you were on the creative treadmill in a great way because they they want to get something amazing. And when you watch the show, they did. They didn't rest until they got what they wanted, which was um, rewarding. I felt like I got in trouble a lot for talking. <laughs> not just so what was a typical recording. Not just texting or no, no. I was like not texting that much back then. It was just I had so much fun, and I would, you know, I became friends with so many people from that show. And Kari and I, they like wouldn't let us sit next to each other because um, we were chatting so much. And um, yeah, Danica and Lacey became two of my really good friends. It just was a great group with a lot of chemistry. Anyway. 
And then the storylines were always so awesome. There was so much to play with. There was like genuinely funny things that you're reading and then you end up laughing because someone in the room's really funny and then you're not supposed to be laughing because it's someone's take and and because you can't laugh. Uh, you're let's laugh that again. And it's just that for One me. More that was time, my typical recording is just trying to be like professional. Um, <laughs> but that's part of what made it good. Is just the, yes, the stuff it was real. It was that. so real. Everybody had such a good time. And and then when it was emotional, I feel like I always got emotional as well. Like when I found out well, yeah, there's spoilers, but when I find out, some people might not make it. <laughs> I really did cry. I mean, it's not <coughs> who? Who? You know? Wait, so tell me who. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to. When she found out that Wally wasn't going to make it, as in, like, you know, no longer of this earth, it did have a profound effect on, on members of the cast, including mm-hmm. myself. I cried when I read that. I know. And I came in and talked to Greg and Brandon, and they said, we're so sorry, we're sorry we killed you off. And I went, no, 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 man. That's like, you get immortal. You get immortalized if you get killed off in a cartoon. And it, it really, I mean, I, I cried when I read it. So. Hmm. You know, the joy and the happiness was for reals, I think, on that show. And that was a question that everyone was actually well, asking. Careful, a lag can be dangerous. Uh, the New Zealand lag. Yeah. He's staring at us. I like, know we're just waiting for this lag to get biased, basically. <laughs> um, so you'll edit. Sad that you brought up. Sorry. I'm, I'm dead. Thank you. Yeah, well, you know, you. Know, versus, well, that was versus. the last question I had. Thanks, guys. I'm done. I'm done. All right now. <laughs> but okay, we're finished. That no. <laughs> Can you tell I me? Keep a l- binging and bring it back. <laughs> <laughs> Just bring it back already, people, please. Can you tell me a little bit about the work that each of you guys really um, took in to develop each of your characters? Uh, did you guys do any research beforehand? And if you guys just had any similarities from previous roles that you've actually taken on before actually approaching these characters? I always want to go second. Okay, then I go first. Then yeah. Okay, that'll work. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Uh, for Kid Flash, let's see. Not similar to anything else I had done prior to that, really. Um, as far as work for the role, yes, I, you know, read some comics and things like that. I didn't watch any any Teen Titans or any um, animated stuff, just because I I don't like to watch other people's performances. Uh, I'm a a sponge, so I soak up everything, and I don't ever want anybody else's stuff to come out. I want my stuff to come out. But I will take in as much raw material as I can. So Same, same, same. Looking okay. at, you know, costumes and looking at the artwork that they would give us. And um, I even talked to Greg and Brandon a few times about character, just asking them specific questions about things, you know, um, where they saw him, where, where are the lines, where are the boundaries, you know. Uh, and uh, that eventually it kind of took shape. You know, I, I think that one of the gifts that we had as actors was the writing on the show was so great that you would discover things about your character that week, mm-hmm. like organically. You'd be like, oh, 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 this is this is new, this is fabulous, and you would get a chance to do some uh, piece of it, an, another piece of the character, a piece of the puzzle, um, and keep up with that as an actor. Is, that's also very challenging, enjoyable. So I don't, I wouldn't say like not. Super tons of research in advance, trying to keep my mind open, but understand the framework of the character. And then, as you go, they're handing you new, new um, balls to throw. I was going to go with the food analogy. Yeah, yeah, I was kind of hoping you were going to save me. Yeah, because I'm like, you're going with the, and I got nothing, and I'm like, Artemis, save me! I got nothing. So for me, I did relate to a lot of what you said. Um, I, it's like if someone has an accident and I'm talking to them, I just start having it and I feel really guilty about it. It's not on purpose, but I oh, do. Yeah. I just like, yeah. ever since I was a kid, I love that stuff. So it is important to me to try and clear my head before I go in so I can find my authentic voice. Um, and, oh my gosh, I can get a little silly for a minute, but when Let's I think about attention. acting, no, when I think about acting, this is kind of how I explained it to my kid. Um, this will always be like, Mommy, what words are you doing? Because pr- he hears me practicing all the time and I'm trying to figure out stuff at home. I love that. And don't do that voice, Mommy. And um, Daddy, don't go in the closet make those noises. Yeah. So I explained to him, like, when you're, this is my little analogy that I use, but I kind of, I kind of really like it. 
works for my brain anyway. So I think that like, um, if you're painting, and now it's kind of funny because I feel like people paint online so you get like that palette, but I used to make one since I'm old, that you have that like actual palette in your hand and you try to find yellow. Yes. And your script calls for like red, day. say is mad, and yellow is happy or whatever the color is. If you think about um, a palette of color, there's like one million shades of yellow. So for me to bring my yellow is very different maybe than yours, or you to bring your red. And so I try to find like what is the shade that it, it can still be authentic and still my version of like what does angry sound like to me versus them, and then finding that in the vein of where the writers want it. So I I look at it like in color when I'm reading a script and what color is this word in and what does it mean really to me and then what is my true voice when i'm feeling that feeling in the I'm just layered but that's kind of how to try to explain it because this is genius like i am going to try this now i'm going to try the colors thing it makes sense I've to me a lot but, of stuff but what i'm trying to say is if i'm hanging out with someone that's like fluorescent yellow i might start to, and i practice and listen to someone else's flow then it won't be real it won't be my real version and so i think that's kind of a really special thing for me about voice acting that I don't get to do as much on camera because you're kind of pigeonholed based on what your face looks like or your body looks like or what age you look, you know, even if you look older or younger than who you are, you have to play like someone else's brain of yellow. And in voice acting, I get to really, so I'm also acknowledging that I was in a girl that were teen girls and a lot of them had attitude, different types, but I was like, wow, I'm starting to learn about the colors inside me. Like maybe I'm just really in touch with my teenage girl self, <laughs> and that could be maybe a bad thing. Just but a at least sassy this business, yeah. I mean, half the time I don't say what's going on in my head. And most of us, maybe in order to have a more peaceful life, don't say everything that goes on in their head. But you can bring all that to your characters, and I love it. Just letting it um, rip. Unfortunately, yeah. I say the things that are in my head, and yeah. so I can see there would be a benefit to not doing that. That's also good advice. So I'm going to take but the color palette advice. But that works with your character. Think about that, and because gonna... Wally was always oh, that's true. doing that kind of stuff. Yeah. And so there are parts of you, no, you know, no, that there's a reason. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that play into the characters that you're cast as. Now, when yeah. you're on a show, a lot of times the guest star spots end up being other people that are already in the room. I mean, we all end up starting to play other characters because they know you're capable. And um, I remember there was a cat one day, and so we all tried our best cat, and yeah. I was so bad at it. It I was don't think actually you were that bad. it was it was hilarious. I don't but do that. but you were amazing at the cat, and then all of a sudden he was Seagull the cat. I mean, it was just it, it happened with oh, crazy. Like I couldn't even go after him because that's all I could hear in my head. And then I was embarrassed, and I was like, "Don't even make me do it." And so I did something like meow. It's and I didn't get to equal the cat when I did meow. Um, but yeah, we just we went off topic. I think. Yes, we did. But the it's very idea, hot here. yes, it's warm. But the <laughs> idea of as an actor having a color palette is genius. I love that idea. I've never really thought of it that way. It's pretty cool. You're being serious. No, I'm not being. I'm, I'm being serious. Look, these are deep talks with my three-year-old for sharing. Deep right talks. Now. He's the best. My deep talks are like, don't make me get the hose again. Just, just don't. That's how I talk to my kids. Not true. Uh, <laughs> like, have you seen the thing? I were a thirteen-year-old girl, aka your daughter, I'd be like, "Have oh you seen my, my, God, my thing on YouTube play. where I was the Joker?" No, I mean maybe I did. Actually. And and my daughter was doing my makeup. Oh, that's awesome. She did my makeup because she heard I was the Joker, Lego Joker. Love it. And so I just filmed the whole thing. I just did a Lego thing. thing. Did you do Lego stall? Yeah, yeah, it just came out. Me too. Yep, yeah, just came out. But we don't see you don't see other people. That's one of no. the things about Young Justice that was so awesome. We would like actually see each other and record yeah. together. A lot of these things you do by yourself in a room. So yeah. Anyway, we were rambling. What was your other question? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, no. no, no, no. This is the best third wheel of my life, by the way. I swear, this is just the best <laughs> third wheeling I've ever done. <laughs> really Keep going. <laughs> Yeah. So, um, can you tell me just what it's a, a little bit what it's like? I, I think you've kind of mentioned this already, but it's just a little bit of what it's like to um, see your voice come out of these characters and how you sort of like the process of bringing them to life. That's kind of the final step, being able to rewatch it and just be like, oh yeah, it's kind of strange that that's kind of me at the same time. But you know, what, what is that experience you know what, like for you guys? You were gonna go first, James. I was. I was just thinking because immediately I thought about how. 
every time I would watch myself in a show that I did on camera, I would watch it like how you would watch a scary movie, like, <laughs> oh, why did I make that thing? Like, oh, you know that gives you a little chin when you do this? Like, I don't know, like, I'm just beating myself up the whole time, or, oh, I knew that outfit was bad, or, like, God, you know, you're just, that's a terror, it's hard to be a girl, and then to be a girl, like, and then when I would watch a cartoon, I was just like, wow, I can just, it was exciting when I heard my voice for the first time, I think it was a kung fu piano, it was the first time I heard my voice something, and I was like, oh! <laughs> like I screamed, and then I was in a movie theater, and I got to be quiet, but <laughs> but then I can just enjoy it after that, after the initial thing, because you're, first of all, it's so long since you recorded it, yes. usually, because they have to animate it, and then, you know, you know tons a of year things most that happen, the and then, you know, we're skipping over like 80 million Yes. And um, a lot of hard work goes into that. And then by the time I get to see it, another thing that's really beautiful is you truly understand the collaboration. It's not just mm -hmm. us that made that character. Mm -hmm. Someone else really, you know, thought long and hard and worked their whole life to be good at making you fight that way um, and mm -hmm. matching it to your voice. And someone else directed it. And someone else, you know, it's just there's so many layers. So for me, it's really enjoyable to watch. And, and um, I don't have that experience. Yeah. I was going to compare it to like being in part of an orchestra, like or a, a musical band of some kind. And I think of orchestra because there's so many different people playing, and then you're playing your notes and you're doing whatever. But then if you listen back to the recording, you're like, "Wow, this is Beethoven," and it sounds the way it's supposed to. But when you're doing it, you're just playing your violin and you're doing your thing. And I'm just focused it. on my color. But but <laughs> the palette metaphor is going to go for days. Yep. But but it, you, you appreciate everyone else's work mm -hmm. when you watch it back, when you listen to it back, you can have a full appreciation for how, how not insignificant you are, but how just a piece of the process you are and yeah. how everyone else makes it come alive. Yeah. And uh, very grateful for their work and their creativity. Mm -hmm. um, you know, just being the voice actors, we get a lot of the attention and things like that. But the nice part about comics is that the artists get a ton of attention too, like Phil Barrasso, who did the, uh, you know, the, was the artist behind the animation style for Young Justice. Amazing work, and all the work that he's done. I love it when people see all the different artists. Yeah, the musicians. That are responsible for it. Right? So yeah, the composers many. for yeah. Young Justice, Ralph Chin, every, everybody involved. Okay, that's right now. Okay, cool, yeah. Hey, yeah. You're <laughs> You set me up perfectly for the next okay. question, which is yeah. uh, some of the fan questions now, actually. Last question. I think I gotta go here. Gotta oh, okay. Yeah. I can't do that's right. That's right. Okay. Um, so, uh, just a fun one, real quick. Uh, what are some? Uh, what do you think is your, are your respective characters' favorite songs? Favorite songs. I feel like I should have had that question in advance. <laughs> yeah, me too. Because to get in the head of the character, real quick. Also, you have to think mm -hmm. about like. Okay, we're different ages. Yes. So I don't even know. Oh, it's so sad. What songs are out today? I mean, like, like, if, if like Wally, is she fifteen today or sixteen today? Also, I want to show you. I, I've got I literally it. I got have it. my baby monitor here, so I'm like trying to figure out like when you, one of you out there, whoever's watching this and has children, if you have three kids that are three and under, like you wouldn't know what was on the radio. You would today have no either. idea what TV. Do you people even listen to the radio? Anymore? But I've got it. I think mm -hmm. Wally would like the band Yell. Y E L L E. They're a French indie techno pop band. Cool. So that's I think that would be his favorite band, and they have a bunch of different songs. I think he would pick. So there you go. Okay. He likes that. <laughs> oh, God. And hard. I have like two dueling ideas in my head, and I'm not yeah, sure which one. one. <laughs> Spit them out. Well, I just it. feel yeah, but it's hard. I don't. I have trouble with favorites. This is true. I like top ten lists, or even like top five or top three. I can do those, but I I'm very mood based, and I believe that Artemis is also. Um, you know, there's like my favorite song for this. Like, say we're going into mm -hmm. battle, that's gonna be a really different song in my head than my favorite song for like hanging out with my friends. Um, I mean, she's sarcastic, so I think it might you know song with some humor and it would be good but then there's like when she's angry there's a lot of hard music up there for that and then I don't know like for me I, I love like 07 I love music that calms me down and very hype 
for. So I like to get into that zone and. I don't and know. If she would use tricky. her comfort, would probably be way different too. Like if she's it's not sad. country. I'm not gonna lie. It's not that. <laughs> That's all I know. I know what it's not. <laughs> I know what I don't want to eat tonight. Okay, okay. I'm just saying. I know where I don't want to go. Uh, I don't know. It's just yeah. I've narrowed it down to some genres. So I'm gonna have to get back to you on it. <laughs> <laughs> That is, that is the best answer. <laughs> yes. Our blue monkey really enjoys the dulcet tones of broth. <laughs> All the same. There's no wrong answer. It's okay. No, it's so stupid. Um. And I got uh, one final yeah. question for you guys. I did something. I am going to watch it now. Anyway, what were you talking about? That was our last question. Oh yes, what time is it? since uh, Jason has to run know. and everything. Uh, if you were given the opportunity, how many seasons more of the show would you guys be willing to do? Unlimited. Ten million. Seriously, this is uh, that would be a dream come true. Keep, I would love to work on it for the rest of my life, really. Yeah. And uh, keep, please keep binging YJ. It it's in universe silly, what they've created. It's like, you know, people get married, they have kids. Yeah. I mean, this. They age. There's alternate years. universes. Yeah. We could keep this going. We could, definitely. I'm sure of it. Thanks to the animators, I could be 90 and still being, you know. Magic is the real life. A major load. <laughs> How was that? Is that good? <laughs> uh, I, I want them to. I want them to keep binging. Because people, believe it or not, that can have an effect. If people know really, you watch it, they know that you like it. Just it keep really binging, binging it on them. Don't stop. All right. We would not be doing this interview if we did not believe that you guys have the power to make this happen. I mean. Well, I'm lonely, so the reason I'm heads. doing this interview might be slightly different. But. Yeah. Okay. Thank you guys Thank you so guys. much for your time and everything. I really appreciate it. Keep it doing on justice, everybody. Hashtag yeah, justice and chill. <laughs> New Zealand is beautiful. Say hi to all Hashtag the Hashtag keep binging YJ. Keep binging. We'll talk to you later. Yeah, Bye -bye. thanks so much, guys. Bye.